You are listening to The Bible Breakthrough with Pastor David Engman and Scott Brecky. In this study, we will break down the Bible from B.C. to A.D. chronologically while offering historical context and real-life application for today. This series is brought to you by the Breakthrough Media Network. Hi, my name is Pastor Dave Engman, and this is Scott Brecky. And today in studio, we have a special guest. We have Pastor Paul. And Pastor Paul is um, the founder of Wild Hearts Adventures, which is a program of Breakthrough Ministries. And he is the director of that program. Um, Pastor, um, would you take 30 seconds just to describe Wild Hearts? Sure, love to. Um, Wild Hearts Adventures is a program that uh, where we want to uh, give people the opportunity to experience God's love and, and connection with Him in the wilderness. And we reach out to those who are struggling. Um, uh, we focus a lot on people in recovery, uh, couples who are struggling, uh, father, mother, child relationships. And we just think it's an awesome opportunity for people to get away yeah. and to um, have that chance to connect with each other and with God. And um, to have that time of, of, you know, being able to think and to maybe focus on some things in their life that they would love to see change in. Nice. And I know for a fact that you've got 17 trips planned this year. How many mm -hmm. of those are to Colorado? Uh, six right now. Okay. So six, six opportunities to go and spend about a week climbing mountains in Colorado. Uh, Pastor Paul's one of my dearest friends. It's Paul Landhart. Uh, you can find a link to Wild Hearts Adventures uh, on our, on the Breakthrough website um, and go there to sign up to find out more about uh, whether or not God's calling you to get involved in that ministry. So what we want to do now is we just want to welcome you to the Bible Breakthrough. And we want to thank you, our audience, for joining us today. Now, ultimately, our goal is to lead you into a deeper, more intimate relationship with Jesus. And please look for the bonus video to this episode as we discuss various topics that come up because of the scripture we cover today. And also the show notes will be linked in the description of this video. In the last episode, we read through Genesis 1, 24 through 2, 4, and wrapped up our discussion about the account of creation. The scripture that we're going to cover today is Genesis 2, starting at verse 4 through 25. This marks the beginning of humanity with man and woman, uh, woman in the garden. Now, there's three questions that I encourage you to be asking yourself as you listen. What is the text saying? What does it mean? And how can I apply what I'm learning to my life? And before we're going to uh, read the Bible here, let's start off with prayer. So, Lord, I thank you so much again for being able to do this. Lord, I pray that you would uh, just illuminate as we read, Lord. That's the word that stands out to me, Lord, is just illuminate to us what you are, are trying to speak to us in, Lord. So, um, Father, please do that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so let's open the Bible and let's read the passage out of Genesis chapter 2, starting at verse 4. Scott, would you be willing to do that? Yep. So, when the Lord God made the heavens and the earth, neither wild plants nor grains were growing on the earth. For the Lord God had not yet sent rain to water the earth, and there were no people to cultivate the soil. Instead, springs came up from the ground and watered all the land. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had made. The Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground, trees that were beautiful and that produced delicious fruit. In the middle of the garden he placed the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed from the land of Eden, watering the garden, and then dividing into four branches. The first branch, called the Pishon, flowed from the entire land of Havala, 
where gold is found. The gold of that land is ex exceptionally pure. Aromatic resin and onyx stone are also found there. The second branch, called the Gihon, flowed around the entire land of Cush. The third branch, called the Tigris, flowed east of the land of Assur. And the fourth branch is called the Euphrates. The Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, You may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you will surely die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. So the Lord God formed from the ground all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And the man chose a name for each one. He gave names to all the livestock, all the birds of the sky, and all the wild animals. But still, there was no helper just right for him. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord made a woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. At last, he exclaimed, This one is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She will be called woman, because she was taken from man. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Now the man and his wife were both naked, but felt no shame. Wonderful job. Thanks for reading that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot there. Um, what, uh, what would you say? Well, let me, let me just start out with giving you an idea of what I took away from that. Um, there, were, there were four points. Uh, the first point uh, was the point of purpose. Um, you know, God placed uh, the man in the garden. Right? And it was his place to rest and to work. God shows us that we have purpose through the work that he, that he gives us and that God will help us succeed. Uh, for example, in verse 15, man's job, as we looked, was to tend and to watch over the garden. Um, God put man in the garden. He placed them there. We talked a little bit about this uh, this morning, uh, Scott, Paul was not a part of that discussion, but the idea was that God created this garden and then he put the man that he created in the garden. The man had already been created. The garden uh, was created next and then God put the man in the garden and then gave man a job to do. And that job was to tend the garden and to watch over the garden. Um, the other point I'll make is uh, regarding verse 19. In that verse, God brought the animals to the man, and he had the man make, uh, name the animals. Mm -hmm. So as, as it pertains to just the discussion around this, um, God placing the man in the garden uh, gave man purpose when God gave him a job to do. So, uh, you know, any, any discussion topics around that? Any ideas or thoughts that you have that come out of that first key takeaway? Well, I mean, that we see that just like everything else God makes, there's a reason for it, there's a purpose for it. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking, okay, he's creating a man, he does that. He's created me in his image. There must be a purpose for my life. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, there's... There's purpose for everything that God creates, including every single person. So maybe if there's someone struggling out there with purpose, there's there's a purpose for and a plan for your life that God has. So right. Any uh, thoughts from you, Pastor? Yeah, I would add that. Um, I love what Scott shared there. Um, along with that, it was beautiful. I mean, the Garden of Eden was beautiful. Everything God created was beautiful. We know that. And um, God's plan for us was to have purpose, as just stated. And that's a beautiful thing. And I, and I think that's sometimes what we struggle with, is God's intent was for those tasks or, or things that he gave us to do was meant to be a beautiful thing. Yeah. I agree so with that. really quick going off that so what would you say like what if your tasks like started to like be like a burden and like you're like oh my gosh I have so many tasks or 
the things I'm doing, they feel like a burden more than like, it doesn't feel like a good thing, you know? Like, um, so my question is, is, you know, just say there's, there's a person out there that's really struggling with like, is this really, um, my purpose or my plan that God has my, or my, my, in my life, you know? So what would be something that would clearly di direct someone that would say, this is maybe not where, not you, where you're supposed to be at and God has a different purpose for your, your life. So, um, well, I, let me, let me interject on that thought just for a second. You know, um, as we read through this passage that we read here today, um, we can clearly see in a moment, we'll talk more about it, but we can clearly see that the man had a desire for, for a helper. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's my contention that, um, God puts desire within mm -hmm. us. Yes. God puts the desires of our heart in our heart. And God activates that desire. And we then start to want more and more uh, the desire of our heart. So to the point that you're bringing up as a question, if, for example, you wake up in the morning yeah. and the alarm goes off and your first thought is, I can't stand doing whatever it is I'm doing. Like yeah. I hate my job, for example, <laughs> right. right? Yeah. It might be a good indicator as to whether or not you're operating in God's will for your life because his will for your life would be to have you do uh, something that you thoroughly enjoy. I, I joke about it from time to time, but since we launched Breakthrough Ministries over 13 years ago, actually even before that, when, when I, I entered into ministry, you know, kind of full time in my life, uh, I recognized that, you know, I, since then I haven't worked a day in my life per se. Yeah. Like I, I'm so excited yeah. to come and do life the way that we're doing life. So I don't know if that's a leading question or a closed end or open ended question, but that's kind of my take on it. Well, something when you were saying that it just reminded me of a, well, maybe a shout out to Donnie Borchers, one of our board members is he says, we actually, we get to do this, you know, and, and I do, I, I, before coming on to the ministry, I had um, a regular job doing bathroom remodeling and it was good and fine. I think the Lord used it, but, I felt like there was more. I felt like like God created me for something greater than just resurfacing bathtubs. And he used me in that in in that the last, especially the last 7 years. Mm -hmm. Like God kind of taught me how to evangelize and tell people about him kind of where I went, but I still had that thing I like that question of man there's got to be more than mm -hmm. than than just bathtubs, right? right. So so, All right, so, so one of the other key takeaways that we get from this is this idea about free will. Um, you know, God established free will by warning man not to eat from a certain tree that he put in the middle of the garden. Oh. Um, and that tree was the tree of knowledge of good and evil and told the man, if you do, he, he lays out the consequence. If you eat from that, mm. you will be sure to die. So as it pertains to um, free will, uh, you know, in, in the fact that ultimately man, the man and, and the woman um, violated that rule by eating from that tree. Um, we call the, uh, the fall, we call that the fall of man when they, when they chose to basically disobey God. Mm -hmm. um, and then we see all the consequences as a result of such. Uh, but I think it was important because um, you can't be completely free. It's a two-sided coin. God says, I'm giving you free will. I want you to have the ability to choose. You can't have that ability without having the flip side of that coin, which is something that he's warned you not to do. So it gives us an opportunity to make a choice. And we get many, many decisions every day in operating in free will. But uh, the question really uh, that, that comes to my mind is, is how often are we bringing that back to the Lord and asking the Lord, Lord, what would you have me do here? And then are we listening? And if we are, then are we obeying, right? Mm -hmm. um, go ahead. Anything to add to that? Again, I I just think it's a beautiful thing. I, I, I know I'm maybe overusing that word, but um, the idea that God would create us with the ability to 
to choose. Yeah, it's huge. I think I think it's often overlooked, especially in this early section of the Bible where um, people look at the creation and what God, you know, all that God created, and sometimes we forget that. Yeah, His original plan was that we could choose. And of course, his desire that we would follow him, and as you'll talk later on, yeah. that we we kind of stepped outside of that plan and God's desire for us. But um, I think we really need to grab hold of that. That right off the bat, we were given that choice. Yeah, and, and it's it a big did, deal. It, and it didn't take long for us to make the wrong choice. Yeah, <laughs> and one thing I was going to bring up was it's it's interesting to me that in all of creation, he gives. Us and I could be corrected on this, but he gives us the choice of free free will, right? Not the other, not the animals, not anything. So it's specifically different that he gives us who was created in his image. We have free will, not the animals and all the other things. So we're like set. I don't know. I just see us being set apart from um, God. And one of the things that he does that sets us apart is giving us that free will. I'm so thankful that he does. You know, I mean, who wants to have um, like you know, we've talked about robots before. He just push this button and there it goes and does its thing. It's like, I'm just so grateful that he, he, he lets us have that choice. And of course, we, we know that, yeah, we've all um, sinned and, and chose chosen that, which leads to death. But so. Yeah. So we are, um, we have a few other takeaways and we're going to dive into those in our, our bonus video. Um, one of the things that we do every episode is talk about application because as we throw around from time to time actually we throw it around every episode and the idea is what good is knowledge mm -hmm. if we don't apply it application is is what causes it's like a key that you can put in a door that when you open that door you step through into transformation and the reality is, is we've all been raised up in a sin-filled world. And um, as we've talked, our, our saving faith is found only in Jesus. And you can't um, really truly understand the depth of wisdom that comes from the Bible without it, without that saving faith in Jesus. So what application principles would you say you could see in just the first two takeaways purpose and free will that we've talked about today? I, um, I would take away that um, it, what it allows me to do on a daily basis is to stop and think about, number one, first takeaway, that God does have a plan. He does have a purpose for me. Um, but inside of that plan, um, He gives me a choice. Mm -hmm. So as I'm going through my day, uh, whether it be a small thing or maybe uh, I'm going through a big struggle, I need to stop and, and, and ask God and focus on what what does He want for me? What is His desire? You know, in, in what we just read, His desire was for us to follow Him and to be obedient. Mm. And am I am I doing that right now? That's good. That's really good. I like that. I'll go. I'll I'll kind of dive in at the end of what you said. So, um, w with God's warning, I think you hit it on the, the head that we have so many choices. I mean, just think of right when you wake up, from the moment you wake up to the, the moment that you go to sleep, think of how many choices you have out through your day. And I think one thing for me that I for sure am going to take away is how many of those choices do I bring to the Lord? How many of those choices that I say, do, Lord, do you want me to do this? Or, you know, Lord, I'm, I'm thinking about doing this like, what is it that you want me to do? And he will, I think if you bring it to him, he'll clearly tell you, just like he does in this. this is clearly, he's clearly giving you instruction what to do and what not to do, right? Yeah. So he's help almost laying out the choice right there for mm -hmm. you. So he's giving you what, what, um, what to do. So that's, that's the one takeaway for me. So I would then say that listening to both of you and your explanation of application here regarding purpose, um, is first of all just recognizing so that might be a takeaway application principle just just recognize that God created you for a yeah. purpose and, yeah. and right now I'm speaking to our audience God created you for a purpose yeah. 
And it's his will that you uh, seek him and then also um, pay attention to the desires of your heart. You know, uh, the man had a desire in, in this scripture reading. He had a desire for a helper. Help. And God uh, activated that desire to, at the right time and then made the woman. And, and, and when that happened, what did, what did uh, the man say? At last. At last. Exclamation point. <laughs> an exclamation. He knew. Yeah. And, and so I, I'm just saying, bring uh, your situation to the Lord, whatever it is. If you have uh, a job you don't particularly like or don't feel as though you're in the right place, then bring it before the Lord. and He'll direct your path. God says to us in his word, make your plans. But know this, I will determine your steps. Um, again, we did talk about the fact that um, we're going to have a bonus video to this episode. Yeah. Uh, and, and really what I want for you is to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit before you even listen to that bonus video uh, to our listening audience. Uh, obedience. Remember, obedience is really the key that unlocks the door to transformation. And you can only know the will of the Father as it pertains to individual to you individually if you bring that to Him individually. It's very, it, it's it's very private conversations you get to have with the Creator of the world, your Father in heaven. Um, and I, and again, what good is knowledge if we don't apply it? So, how about you? Uh, can you, you know, based on what we read today, what can you apply? to your life. Look, if, if you are like any of us, if you struggle with any of the, the topics that are being brought forth in the, in the scriptures that we're reading, we want you to know, again, you're not alone. A lot of people struggle. We all do struggle and wrestle with some of this, and it's okay. Just hang in there and keep coming back. Yeah. Just a, again, a reminder to check out the bonus video where we will be diving deeper into some of the main points from this episode. And we're going to be uh, including in that bonus ma uh, material, we're going to be talking about companionship and also mar marriage. Coming from three married guys ourselves, I think that should be a pretty interesting topic. So look for that after, after this uh, episode. Yeah. Thank you, Scott, for yeah. being a part of this. And Pastor Paul, thank you so much for right. joining us today. Um, we want to thank you for, for listening. And we also want you to know that we are looking forward to our next meeting together in episode four as we continue our study of the first era beginnings, the greatest story ever told. That and more is awaiting you on this journey. Thank you and God bless. Thank you for tuning in to The Bible Breakthrough with Pastor David Engman and Scott Brecky. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and will join us again for more of the Bible from B.C. to A.D. We are a volunteer-driven ministry and rely on you to help us get the word out to the world. Please like this podcast on Facebook, share it to your page, and continue to listen on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere you find your favorite podcasts. This has been a broadcast of the Breakthrough Media Network.